Welcome to this captivating video. Today, we'll be exploring the world of ammonia-powered ships, a revolutionary solution for emission-free marine transport. In this video, we're honored to feature an exclusive interview with a key figure in this project, Thomas McKenney, the head of ship design at the Maersk MC Kinney Moller Center for Zero Carbon Shipping. He'll provide fascinating insights into this fascinating project and the innovative technology driving it. So, make sure to stay tuned. MS Nogaps is a handy-sized ammonia fuel gas carrier that can also carry ammonia as a cargo and is optimized for commercial operation between the Gulf of Mexico and Northern Europe with a design speed of 15 knots and 12,000 nautical mile endurance. The 22,000 cubic meter cargo capacity is divided into three semi-refrigerated type C bi-lobe tanks located below deck with a design pressure of around 5 bar. Oil-off gas is managed using reliquification units located in the cargo handling room on deck. There are three semi-refrigerated Type C ammonia fuel tanks located on deck with a total capacity of 2,700 cubic meters. The fuel reliquification and handling rooms are located in the deck house on port side. In the fuel handling room, the fuel is received from the storage tanks and prepared to be sent to the main engine. Fuel supply leaves the fuel valve train at an increased pressure of 80 bar and passes through a double-walled pipe to the engine room. To achieve optimal emission reduction while minimizing risk and cost, the main engine is the only ammonia consumer on board. Zooming into the engine room, there is one 7.2 megawatt two-stroke ammonia-fueled main engine with shaft generator. Ammonia-related emissions are expected to be managed through the engine design and an SCR. MS Nogaps can also be used as a bunkering vessel. Important considerations included bunkering system capacity, manifolds, crane and hose handling, fenders, and maneuverability. To find out more information about the project and associated publications, please visit our website at zerocarbonshipping.com. Welcome, Thomas. I'm glad to be here with you. I've seen now you are working on this project, uh, NAS. No gaps uh, project. Yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting, yeah. um, and I really want you to talk about it because I mean I, I've never seen this technology uh, on when I've seen the the video about it. It was actually quite interesting, but quite technical. So can yeah. you explain, please, Thomas? Yeah, let me start by giving just kind of a fly into the ammonia fuel pathway because this pathway is is the least mature uh, out of the four that we consider at the center, which is also why we. Uh, you know, I do, do a lot of our, our a lot of our current effort is based uh, around the ammonia pathway to try to unlock it, and and maybe just starting with why ammonia and and with ammonia the important thing there's a few important aspects which make it interesting. One is it doesn't require carbon for production, and it okay. doesn't generate CO2 under combustion. So. Ammonia, from a molecular point of view, is just NH3, so there's no carbon in that. Uh, there is some pilot fuel that you need to like ignite ammonia because it's not easily ignitable or combustible. Um, and if that is fossil-based fuel, then of course there will be some emissions. But generally, uh, the molecule itself doesn't have CO2. Then it can be produced. And, and, ha and in large quantities. And it's all, ammonia is already being used uh, in industries, in chemical industry, for example. Ammonia, almost, eight, I think 80% of ammonia goes into fertilizer uh, for you know for growing of, uh, for agricultural purposes. And it's been transported on cargo vessels on board uh, gas carriers for, for decades. There's also the interesting part is that blue ammonia where you uh, use natural gas as the feedstock, but you're capturing the carbon dioxide emissions uh, during production. This is a, a low emission pathway that can be used early in the transition because the biggest challenge for uh, green or renewable electricity is that you need that renew uh, green or renewable ammonia is that you need that electricity, that, that clean, uh, you know, renewable electricity from wind or solar, for example. And so until you have kind of full scale up of that availability and price, blue ammonia could be a viable pathway. So that being said, at the same time, ammonia is not the best or only pathway. So we're transitioning to a world where there will be multiple solutions 
and it will depend on your specific case. Uh, but to mature the ammonia pathway, you know, there's no vessels currently operating with ammonia as a fuel out there. So we're really at the front end of the innovation process here. And whenever you're innovating like this, um, there's not one person or company that has all the knowledge. And that's why No Gaps is, is kind of an important project because it kind of brings together all of the key stakeholders and and what no gaps stand for is it's it's a nordic green ammonia powered ships and this is a consortium of uh of companies including ourselves who we are leading the design efforts at the center but also it includes a ship owner a charter a classification society flag and uh, engine and and uh, system providers and and this is a ship it's an ammonia fueled uh, gas carrier, so it carries ammonia also as a cargo, okay. and it's operating between the U.S., uh, the Gulf of Mexico, up into to northern Europe. And so, um, this process, the design process overall, has kind of gone through uh, an initial phase here, where you have the feasibility, you have a risk assessment, and also different types of analyses like hull form optimization, energy efficiency, gas dispersion. Uh, and, and so in June, we kind of made a pretty big milestone where we achieved an approval in principle from DNV. What this is, is just kind of a, a statement that the design is feasible and that there's no major showstoppers. So from here, it, it's really going to reality. So now the next step is to commercialize the vessel and that we are working with a few select partners on at the moment. Okay, and I have a question. Uh, you know, uh, so you need to build this new ship, but is it possible to convert um, current fleet into ammonia, or it's too complicated? You need to adapt everything on board. It can be done, uh, and and we've done some work at the center on uh, what the impact of uh, fuel conversions are uh, with ammonia. You have to consider a few things. First of all, the engine, but but the more complicated thing is actually the the tank, the, the fuel tank storage, because for ammonia, you either need to store it kind of pressurized, uh, you know, in a in kind of a cylindrical tank, or you need to refrigerate it um, uh, to like negative 33 degrees Celsius. So mm. you need special tank systems. And these tank systems are not a, are not part of conventional vessels uh, that carry fuel oil. So probably 50% of your total cost will come from these tank systems. And then when you do a conversion, you need to figure out where to put it because the energy density of ammonia is different than uh, fuel. So you need almost three times as much space for the same amount of energy. And and so from a naval architecture perspective, you need to figure out where to put that. And of course, you don't want to impact your cargo because that, that's significant. So you, you ideally want to find other solutions. So there's quite a lot of challenges around conversion but it's not impossible and and we see some conversions happening now on uh, the use of methanol as a fuel for example uh with container vessels and and others okay very interesting yeah thank you and you bring many values i wish you all the best thanks you too. Uh, see you around maybe in the industry uh, maybe in copenhagen i don't know <laughs> sounds good let me know if you're here yeah okay right. thank you bye Thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to visit the Maersk MC Kinney Moller Center website for more insights into this fascinating project. Don't hesitate to subscribe to the YouTube channel and the Maritime Vision podcast.